Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. Today is day 20 of AWS DevOps Zero to Hero series. And in this video, we will deep dive and master the concept called ECR. Like every video, even in today's video, we will learn both theory and the demo part. So that means by the end of this video, using this demonstration, you will understand how to access, use, and push and pull your first Docker image onto ECR. So this is going to be a really interesting video. So please watch the video till the end. Now, before I go ahead and explain this concept of ECR and go with the practical part, I would like to tell you that ECR is an AWS service that is used to store and manage containers. That means this service is typically related to containers. And if there is someone who is not aware of the concept of containers, or if you haven't used containers before, I will highly recommend you to watch this video called Introduction to Containers. So I'll put the link in the description for this video called Introduction to Containers, where I have explained about containers in a very, very deep manner, like right from fundamentals to the high level, you will understand using this one single video. So you can watch this video and then you can come back and watch the video called ECR. I mean, you can watch this video and come back to today's video because in today's video, I will use and reference this word called containers multiple times. And if you are not aware of containers, then you will get disconnected. So that's why watch this video and come back to the today's video, right? So let's assume that you have basic understanding of containers and let's proceed with the video ahead. Perfect. So let's start with breaking down this word called as ECR itself. Now this word ECR can be divided into three parts where each alphabet refers one phrase and using these three phases, you can completely understand about ECR. So let's break it down. In this, E stands for elastic. C stands for container. And R here stands for registry. So let's try to understand each word here. Let's start with container. So now everyone knows about container. Container is basically a package which contains your application code and the software or the dependencies that is required to run your application, right? So when we learned about Docker, we have learned a lot about containers. Now here R stands for registry where the CR here represents that ECR is a AWS service that is a container registry. Okay. So ECR is a container registry similar to Docker Hub. Okay. You might be wondering now, if I have Docker Hub, then why should I use ECR? Don't worry. I'll explain this in a very, very detailed way going ahead in this video. But for now, when you are trying to understand about ECR, understand that CR here represents container registry, which is similar to other container registries such as Docker Hub or uh, Quay.io or GCR, GHCR such as GitHub container registry and multiple other container registries that are available in the market. What is the primary purpose of container registries? Any of these container registries serves the same use case. That is, they are used to store the Docker images. What does that mean? Let's say you have a Docker image on your personal laptop and you want to share this Docker image with someone else in the world. So they can be in your same region or there can be different region poles apart from the world. world then you can simply place your Docker image in your laptop onto this container registries and someone else who is at the other part of the world, they can pull the image from this container registry. Just like you post an image onto Instagram and someone else can see the image, right? Similarly, if you have a container image on your laptop using this container registry, 
you can share the images with anyone across the world world now the final or the first alphabet here is elastic which means like any aws services that you see if they start with the alphabet called e that means they represent that this service is highly scalable and available in nature for example you might have heard about ec2 ebs eks wherever you see this e prefixing the other letters that means aws service this aws services are highly scalable and available in nature that means you can increase the capacity of this aws services scalable means you can increase the capacity of this aws services to accommodate any number of resources in this case in terms of ecr you have e here that means you can store any number of container images so it is just pay as you use service where aws does not restrict you with the number of container images and similarly availability here means that aws will take care of making sure that this service that is acr is available all the times for example if you are using docker hub docker is a company that is responsible for keeping the docker hub up and running similarly if you are using acr aws is the company that is responsible for keeping your elastic container registry available all the time right and ecs sorry ecr here means that this container registry is always available or most of the times available and aws is assuring you this right so now you have understood what is ecr now let's try to compare it with the other container registries because that will be your fundamental question and even in most of the interviews people ask you let's take one example like what is the difference between ecr and docker hub or during the interviews your interviewer might ask you what container registry are you using right so here you have to be very careful and you need to understand fundamentally the difference between ecr and docker hub or difference between ecr and the other container registries so typically when you start using containers the first container registry that you might have used is docker hub right why because docker hub is free you can initially log in create an account with docker hub and you can create a public repository in docker hub right what is a public repository so public repository is like when you push your docker image onto this public repository anybody in the world can see it and anybody in the world can download your docker image and docker hub also has private repositories right and these private repositories are typically like only authorized people and people who have access to this repositories can access the docker image like you can restrict that not everybody in the world can use my docker image only my organization or only people who have who i give access can act uh, can access this docker images right so this is the i mean these are the features of docker hub whereas ecr here right fundamentally ecr supports private repositories concept right so by default if you create a repository in docker hub it will be a public repository whereas by default ecr's repositories are private in nature of course you can create a public repository in ecr as well but by default it will create private repositories that means ecr keeps security or you know ecr is fundamentally focused on private repositories whereas docker hub i mean initially docker hub has started it started its focus with public repositories right now many people use docker hub with private repositories as well but the advantage of using ecr is that if you are already a aws user right if your company is already on aws then you can use your iam users right if your company is already on aws then for users you might have created the iam things right you might have created a iam user for services you might have created iam roles you might have configured all the policies so now you can directly integrate this iam with ecr that means unlike here if your company decides to use a docker hub 
private repositories right usually in companies images will not be exposed right you will people within your organization will only use those docker images so here they have to again go to the docker hub and each and every person has to create account with docker hub right and you never know like let's say one one fine day docker hub has gone down right or any container registry that you are using has gone down now you cannot say that docker hub is directly accountable and you might not have direct support uh, with the docker hub as much as you have for ecr right of course docker hub is accountable but here because you are already a aws user you have account with aws you have good relations with aws and it is very very simple to directly integrate your iam users with ecr right so let's say you have 1000 users or you have 10,000 users in your organization. Now, everybody going here, creating account or as a admin, you have to create account for 10,000 users again, and you have to make sure they have right access, they have right policies. Instead, you have already put the effort for IAM users. So simply integrating it will add a lot of added advantage. And apart from this, ECR has very, very good integration with other AWS services for example you are using eks you are using ecs you are using fargate so in such cases ecr has very good integration very better integration compared to docker hub or other registries so that's why during your interviews let's say you are working as a aws devops engineer or you are projecting yourself as aws devops engineer better to go with container registries on your cloud providers if you are an aws better to say that your images are managed using ecr if you are using google cloud then go for gcr right because of course docker hub is a very very good solution but it is mostly preferred for public images right for private registries you can go with registries such as qa.io or ecr gcr whatever it is right so i hope you understood the clear difference between ecr and docker hub and when to say that you are using ecr and when to say that you are using docker hub for your personal projects or for anything you can create public repositories in docker hub and use that whereas mostly organizations go with the private container registries such as ecr gcr qa.io or the other things i hope it is clear now let's go to the AWS console and let's practically implement the concept of ECR. Okay, so for the purpose of demo, I've logged into my AWS account. Before I start with the demo, let me quickly show you this GitHub repository that we are maintaining for this AWS DevOps Zero to Hero series. People, if you are new, then for each day, whenever I'm doing practical, I create a folder on that particular day and I upload the content. If you want to understand what we are doing on each day of the series, the syllabus is also available here, right? If you if you scroll down, you can understand what we are learning each and every day. The content is available for 30 days and I'm following the same content. So even for today, like you can go to the folder called day 20 and inside which we have the complete theory part and the practical part that we are going to do today, right? So in case you are not able to follow some commands or, you know, if you want to take a relook after the video, if you want to go through the theory part, then you can use this GitHub repository and this folder for today's video. Perfect. So let me start with the video quickly, the demo part. So firstly, search for ECR and you will find this called Elastic Container Registry. So while going through the documentation, I found multiple bugs in the documentation. Of course, they are very, very minute. So the thing is Elastic Container Registry multiple times in the documentation says that it's a fully managed Docker container registry. Ideally, the term Docker should not be here because it's a fully managed container registry. Like, the containers does not have to be prefixed with Docker because containers can be created and managed with various other tools as well. Docker is the one that has pioneered the concept of containers and Docker is the most widely used utility, but that does not mean containers are one-to-one -one mapped with Dockers. Containers can be created, managed with other tools as well. And 
suggest that if your container is OCI compliant, so open container compliant, initiative compliant, then you can use any container tools such as build a podman and there are multiple things. Got it? So just wanted to tell you and I've also submitted uh, a fix or you know, I've submitted a ticket to AWS stating what needs to be fixed. Perfect. So let's go into this elastic container registry and click on get started. It's a very, very simple service to use just like Docker Hub. So again, if you have used Docker Hub, what you typically do, you go to Docker Hub, you create an account with Docker Hub, whereas here you don't have to create account because you are already logged into the AWS account, right? Whereas with Docker, you provide these details, you create an account. So let's say I already have an account called Abhishek FI. So I'll go to this account and what I can do, usually if you're already logged in, you will get an option called create repository. Similarly, in AWS ECR also, you get this option called get started and you can create repository. Like I told you, by default, the setting is private. That means by default, AWS recommends you to create private uh, repositories inside this registry. Access is managed by IAM and repository policy permissions, right? So that means people who can access these private repositories should have a IAM user with them. Now you can also create public. If you create public, then anyone in the world can access these things. So what I would recommend is if you are using public, then go with Docker Hub. Whereas if you are using private, then go with your <clears throat> private registry services such as ECR, GCR, GHCR, or whatever you would like to. Provide a repository name. So your repository name can be anything like demo app repo, <coughs> sorry. And here, if you want to enable tag immunity, you can enable the tag immunity where what happens is if you are trying to overwrite uh, the images, then, you know, with the same tag that will be disabled by default. You can also use image scan settings. So automatically, when you are pushing the images, images can be scanned. And this feature is available with modern day container registries. If you are using even uh, Quay.io, let me show you. Sorry. Yeah. Even this is another container registry, which is very, very widely used uh, apart from Docker Hub. And even here, this is the Quay.io. And even here, uh, whenever you push your images, you know, they are by default security scanned. Similarly, if you enable this box, AWS ECR can scan your images. When some developer is pushing the image, it will be scanned and the status will be shown to you so that anyone who is trying to access these images, let's say you want to use the image pushed by someone in Australia or someone in the other part of the world, then you can look at the status of the security and you can decide if you want to use it or not. So it's a good option. You can enable it. And let me tell you, ECR is not a free service. So whenever you are creating any images repositories, then after the demonstration, please try to delete that. So this is the repository that is created for us. Now you can simply push the images, pull the images and anybody can use it. Now you might be asking me like Abhishek, but how do I do that? I don't know exact steps on how to do it. Don't worry. Go to the repository, click here. And you know, you have this option called view push commands. So follow these steps as is, of course, I'm going to show you, but you know, all that you need to do is follow these commands and push your first container image onto ECR. This is for Mac or Linux. Whereas if you are using windows, then click this button so that you get the windows related commands. That means you will get the PowerShell related commands. So let's use this Mac and Linux because I'm on Mac. And the first thing that you need to do is you need to have the AWS CLI installed. So for people who don't know what exactly AWS CLI is. So AWS CLI is a utility that is used to connect or it's a tool that is used to connect AWS from your personal laptop, right? Or AWS CLI is a command line utility that interacts with the AWS APIs. So in the same playlist, if you go to day 10, I have discussed very detailed about AWS CLI, what exactly it is, how does it function, how to use and how to write your first CLI 
script using the AWS CLI. Everything is discussed in detail. But for the purpose of this video, I'll quickly go over and explain you. What you need to do is you can go through this link here. AWS uh, CLI. Just search for AWS CLI. You will get the command line interface documentation. And just click on the documentation button. Command references or user guide. Go to the user guide and you will get an option to download and use it. You know, here you can say get started, install or update. Perfect. So if you are on Linux, use these steps. If you are on Windows, use the steps that are provided below. So you can follow this documentation. Let's say you are getting any questions or if you have any doubts, then go to day 10 in the same playlist called AWS DevOps Zero to Hero and you can understand how to download, install, configure the CLI. You can find the link in the description as well. So in my case, AWS CLI is already configured. So if it is configured, you will get this output when you type the button called, uh, sorry, command called AWS. Now, once you install this, you again have to run this command called as AWS configure. If you have already logged into your AWS account, that is fine. If you haven't logged in, if you have just installed AWS CLI, then you used to use this command called AWS configure. And as you press on this, it will ask you for AWS access key ID, AWS secret access key. It will ask you for the default region and it will ask you for the, sorry, it will ask you for the type of the output. JSON, perfect, click on this. Let's say if you don't know how to get these things again, you can watch day 10 or very quickly click on this button, go to security credentials and you can get your AWS access key ID and security key from this option on your left side, right? If you scroll down, you have this called access keys, create access key and you'll get this access key ID and the secret access key, right? So now it is clear regarding AWS CLI. So let me proceed with the next steps. Once you have that, if you go to the this push command section one more time, here it will clearly provide you the command. And using this command, you can log into your ECR container registry. What does that mean? Let's say you are using Docker Hub. You might be aware of a command called Docker login. Where, what does it do? It will log your, I mean, you will log into your Docker Hub account. Similarly, to log in to ECR, you need to use this command called as AWS ECR, which will fetch your AWS ECR username and password, and it will submit to the Docker login command. Technically, what you are doing, when you type Docker login, you are doing something called Docker login, docker.io. By default, Docker login commands work for docker.io, whereas if you have any other registries, such as you have qa.io, or you have something called as uh, GCR, or in this case, we have ECR. So what we are doing is we are providing our registry name. That means we are trying to use the Docker login command to log into the AWS ECR registry. So we have the command here. You can simply copy the command and paste it here. So this part of the command, what it is doing, this part of the shell script, it is fetching your AWS ECR credentials. And what does pipe do? pipe will send the output of this command as the input to the second command, right? So what does pipe do in shell scripting? It will pass the output of the first command as an input to the second command. So once this command fetch the username and password, it will pass it to this command, right? That's how you are logging into the, you are logging into the AWS ECR. Now click on the enter button and you will log into the AWS ECR. Now, if you are using root account, like let's say in my case, I'm using the root account for the purpose of demo. So by default, I'll have access to ECR and everything on the account. Whereas if you are not using the root account, then you need to explicitly grant access, right? Let's say if your Docker push is failing, then you need to go to your image. Let's say go to IAM. Okay. In IAM, what you will do is go to your user. Let's say you have an IAM user. Here I have one IAM user. Then you can go to permissions tab, add permissions, and you can add any required permissions regarding ECR, right? So 
attach policies directly search for ecr there are five matching permissions right so here you can provide permissions accordingly see what does it say this permissions means aws ecr pull through cache where you know you are granting permissions to get authorization token pull layered put image so you can grant your im user this specific permission perfect now if you are using root account you don't have to do anything of that thing once you enter your previous command all the root account details are fetched and you will successfully log into your aws ecr then what does the next command say so if you go back where exactly is, is this yeah sorry so if you click on this button again now what you will try to do is if you have a container image you can build that container image using docker file let's say i have a very simple docker file here i'm not doing anything i'm just writing the base command here for the purpose of demo and let's try to build this docker image copy this command enter so your docker image will be created then you can copy this image and tag your docker image so what is the tag doing basically you have created the docker image with this name on your local laptop that means when you type docker images i have lot of docker images so let me use head minus 5 docker images so here my image is created right with the name test image so now what i am trying to do with this command here is that i am trying to tag the image that is created on my local to the docker registry that i have right so that this local image will be properly tagged and pushed to the Re registry that we have created here sorry the repository that we have created here so click on this button now the tag is also created if you are following my introduction to containers and the docker series or if you have followed already you will have this clear understanding of the docker commands perfect now let's go back and uh, take a look at the commands one more time we have created the image we have tagged the image now let's try to push the image so by running this command you will successfully push your image on your local laptop to the container registry and anyone who has proper iam access they can access this from the other part of the world they just need to have iam that can log into your aws account so this will take a little time let's wait for one minute and the image will be reflected here right now there are no images here right once the image is pushed you will see the image here so you can use this in your uh, code commit examples or you know when you are performing the ci cd examples last time on day 14 and day 14 day 15 when we did the aws ci and the cd videos i have used docker hub because i haven't covered this concept called as ecr but now that i have covered it you can replace those videos in those videos instead of docker hub you can try using amazon ecr let's see yes it is pushed now let's try to refresh and see if i refresh perfect my docker image is available in the ecr this way you can access you can authorize and you can use the amazon ecr so i hope you enjoyed today's video going ahead when we talk about ecs when we talk about eks this ecr will keep revolving i mean you will listen this word called as ecr multiple times and we will be using this registry itself perfect if you have any questions post that in the comment section and if you have any feedback definitely share it to me thank you so much for watching today's video again take care everyone see you all in tomorrow's video